Welcome back to Dragon Army. In this video, I'm going to share with you my top 10 reasons why you should read Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I thought about just doing a review of Red Rising, but there's been other Red Rising reviews, and this has been a book unlike any other in my history. This was the first time that I finished the book the first time and then immediately did a reread for a second time. And then within the same year, I read it a third time. It was that good to me. I've never done that before with any other book, even books that I've really enjoyed and series that I've really enjoyed. This book for the very first time, I listened to it through audiobook. And you, as you know, if you've listened to audiobooks before, you don't capture every single thing. Uh, you kind of get more of just the gist. And so I wanted to go through and be able to get every single morsel that I missed. So after finishing the audiobook, I had already ordered the hard copy and started reading it immediately after finishing the audiobook. And then after finishing it a second time, I tried to put some distance in between, read some other books, but had to get back to the world of Red Rising, read some more of it. So it is a book that completely captured my attention from the very first read, and it hasn't let go since. So without further ado, allow me to share with you, counting down the top 10 reasons why you should read Red Rising, the first book in the Red Rising series. Number 10. Red Rising is the perfect blend of sci-fi and fantasy. In my opinion, some of the best storytelling is when you take sci-fi and fantasy and you blend them together in it and create a beautiful work of art with it. Here, you've got all of the good elements that makes uh, sci-fi. Of course, it takes place in space. More specifically, this one takes place on Mars. Uh, there are created technologies. Uh, Pierce Brown does this by combining two words, slamming them together, keeping a capital for the second word in the middle of a word, and creating words like quadrille, which is just one word, two different words smashed together. He does that again and again, which makes the first part of the book a little bit of a trudge to get through because you're reading a lot of unfamiliar words, but that also happens in fantasy at times. It happens in a lot of science fiction novels. It's nothing that you wouldn't have seen before. And then he includes a lot of fantasy tropes uh, with the characters and a lot of the technologies are very magical in essence. And then really it's got some ingredients of some young adult literature as well, which really you just combine all three of these and he did it so perfectly in this first book. Which leads me to number nine, which is that Red Rising is the perfect mixture of the bests. And what I mean by this is that there are some glimpses of some of the most popular young adult literature found in this story. If you read through reviews, you'll find other book titles mentioned like Harry Potter and Hunger Games and Divergent and maybe even Ender's Game. And all of these are somewhat true. Now, it's its own book entirely. And so if you dislike any of those books, don't don't think that this book is just a copy of that. Like just to say that Red Rising is another Hunger's, Hunger Games is a disservice to Red Rising. However, there are some elements of all of those books that I've mentioned that are included here in this story. There is a caste system in this book, and it is a lot like Divergent. There are houses in the Institute that are a lot like uh, the houses that are in Harry Potter. There is uh, a battle system that kind of takes place that is a lot like the one that you find in Hunger Games. And even kind of the militaristic division of these brilliant kids, it's a lot like Ender's Game. And while Red Rising has kind of each of these elements, it really is the sum of its parts that makes this book so compelling. My number eight really is in line with these other two that I've already mentioned, and that is that this book is sci-fi light. What I mean by this is that, it, I mean this in a, in a good way, it is not heavy, you don't have to like trudge through all that you might have to in your typical sci-fi novel. A lot of sci-fi novels tend to be about the technologies or about the advancements, or at least those are kind of like the centerpieces. And here, at least in Red Rising, it's not the centerpiece, uh, but it is uh, a method of storytelling. It's it's the, the technologies and the, the science fiction that is employed here is just utilized it's really the setting for the incredible story and the incredible characters that Pierce Brown is going to introduce to the audience. So while it is sci-fi, it's not the heaviest of sci-fi. It, it's something that really is someone who isn't necessarily a science fiction reader uh, could easily come into and, and, and really enjoy. 
Number seven is that Red Rising contains a really well thought out world. Or should I say worlds? It does take place in space, so Earth is really not the focus here. In Red Rising, Mars is, but there's other planets in the galaxy that are also included. And there's kind of this oppressive caste system that is revealed over time uh, with uh, different colors. Uh, reds, of course, and golds, those are kind of at the two ends of the spectrum. And then in between, you've got coppers and silvers and purples and all of these other colors that represents different classes and different roles and responsibilities within society there in the red rising universe i think i said purples and it's actually violets so and the life of the reds are is so dynamically and drastically different than the life of say the golds and that plays a lot of like that builds a lot of tension here in the story that really is consistent throughout every single book in the series pierce brown's creation really is a, a genius way of looking at a at a future that in many ways is advanced, but in many ways is extraordinarily bleak. And that's why and when we're introduced to the main character who, man, we need, we need to fix it all. Number six, the stakes are incredibly high in Red Rising. Pierce Brown is not afraid to take risks and do things that you don't expect and that you most certainly don't want. These young kids are thrown into a competition with one another where you're 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 trying to beat each other up if not kill each other for for the victory. And in that there are some gruesome violent scenes. I've read more violent. I've read more gruesome. But when it comes to children here, it's kind of just a little bit more gruesome. It kind of reminds me of Lord of the Flies where it's a little bit uncomfortable. That's just one of the examples of how Pierce Brown kind of pushes the boundaries a little bit in what he's doing and what he's accomplishing. Even the way that it's set up, man, I, I, Darrow at the beginning is a married man at like age 15, maybe 16. So all of this is starting young and the societies that he's created and the, the dangers that are real and the battles that take place. He's not afraid to, to push the limits and to, and to try something new and uncomfortable. Because of the way the story is set up, Darrow is seconds away from being incredibly in trouble from nearly the beginning of the book all the way till the end, not just because of the situations that he finds himself in, but just because of who he is. He is a red, the lowest of the low, and he finds himself amongst the golds, the highest of the high, and they don't know who he is. And so at any moment, he might be discovered. And at any moment, he, while trying to come against the golds, is befriending maybe even falling in love with at times some of the golds it, it just creates some significant stakes not not the cow kind and puts you on the edge of your seat from the beginning of the book to the end which makes it for a thrilling ride number five is the reveals the reveals are epic. I love, I love reveals. I'm never reading a book, uh, thinking ahead of like, what's going to happen or what, what, how is the author going to trick me? My mind, maybe I'm not that creative or I'm not that smart or whatever the case might be. I like to just take a chapter at a time and allow the story to come to me as the reader intended. So I'm always 99% of the time surprised by reveals. In this story, there are, are at least three reveals that you're not going to expect and you're not going to see coming. And they're well placed throughout the book so that they don't just land at the very end of the book and it's like, hey, surprise, everything you thought, he was asleep the whole time. It's not that. Instead, it's paced incredibly well so that you've got a reveal Near, near the beginning that's pretty significant you've got a reveal halfway through you've got a, a couple of reveals at the end it's just it's really well done so that it takes you by surprise it doesn't just throw things completely out of uh, control or into chaos but it does it does change the story quite quite significantly i love reveals when they're done well and and uh, pierce brown in red rising does it incredibly well the number four reason why you should read Red Rising is because not everyone has a happy ending. That might be a reason why you don't want to read this book, but I enjoy when characters die. It's not something that brings me joy, don't get me wrong, but it is, it is necessary and it's, it's 
it's good. It's good storytelling and it's gripping and it causes now needless death. That's pathetic and get get out of here with that. But reasonable, purposeful, like story plot moving forward deaths, even of characters that you like and that you love and that you care for. It's okay. And Pierce Brown is a master of it. He knows when to do it, when not to do it. He knows he, sometimes he slips it in there. But here in Red Rising, you've got you've got a couple that uh, that are necessary to the story, and that helps move things along, and that helps change the characters and what they're fighting for. People dying doesn't make a good book, but when people die reasonably at the right time for the right reason, reasonably, then then that can help. Uh, create a good book, which is what happens here in Red Rising. Number three is Pierce Brown's writing. It's as simple as that, but the author is very good. He ha he has his own kind of um, timbre. I looked it up. It's not timbre. It's like timber or something like that. Timber! But I probably shouldn't even have used that word. I yell no, I yell in timber. He's got his own way of writing that is not the finest of literature. It doesn't flow on the page and you wouldn't want it to be in cursive, but it's the best for its genre. It is readable. It is understandable. It is engaging. There are speeches that are given that I guess that some people could read as melodramatic or as like, okay, why are you doing this? But I, when I'm reading someone giving this speech, I'm up in arms holding my shield and my sword ready to go into battle. It's so much fun. It, every sentence feels like it has a purpose and it has a reason, which is good. There's no fluff here. It's all coming together to tell the beautiful story that is in this book. Number two, very few books can stand up against the characters that are here in Red Rising. You have got some of the best cast of characters here in this story. Listen, the series continues. However, the best characters that you're going to get in the entire saga are found here in this first book. You start with the main character, Darrow, who is this complex, broken from the beginning, yet resiliently strong lead character. And then you're shortly introduced to this young lady named Mustang, or at least nicknamed Mustang. Her name's Virginia, but she is also, she's this strong woman. She's, she's not this tropey, feminine, young adult, pretty, you know, that, and she is pretty, all right? And she is young adult, all of those things, but she kind of defies what a lot of authors just rely on and typically go to when it comes to a heroine in the story. Mustang here in this first book goes against the grain there. She's strong, independent, bold, brash, yet even as the series continues, she becomes even more layered, even more beautiful, even more complex. Mustang is an incredible character. And then you've got Severo, the best sidekick in almost all literature other than you, Samwise Gamgee. He is bad, he is raw, he is gross, and he is brilliant, and he's loyal, and he's great. I absolutely love the complexity that is Severo, and his family, and his motives, and his decisions. Severo is the best character in Red Rising in all of the series. And that's just listing three of the main characters. There are supporting cast members that are just as interesting. Uh, adults as well as other kids that are there at the Institute. The villains throughout. Every every character in the story is memorable, good, uh, in, in, unique, and individualistic. Just brilliant, beautiful characters that all fall into their own cast systems as well. Sometimes rubbing against the grain even in their cast system. Just an incredible, incredible cast of characters. And then finally, the number one reason why you should read Red Rising is because it is just the first of a long line now of a series that continues in its strength. While I personally will always have a soft spot for the first in a series, um, some people enjoy the second even more than the first, and they enjoy some later installations than even the first. I love where it begins, however, the series does continue. There are two trilogies, uh, a sixology, that's not what it's called, that is in the process of being created. The first trilogy is already complete with the first three books. It is Red Rising, Golden... Golden Sun and Morning Star. And then the second trilogy takes place 10 years after the ending of the first trilogy. Uh, so far is Iron Gold, Dark Age just came out this year, and the third and final yet to be announced book in that trilogy. The characters continue in their depth. The story continues in its 
raw beauty and terrible punishments. You can just read the first trilogy and get the story and be done with it and that's fine because the second trilogy, a completely new and interesting thing that Pierce Brown did is that he actually had multiple viewpoints, not just from Darrow, but from, I believe in the first book of the second trilogy, he has three different viewpoints. In the second book in the second trilogy, he has four different viewpoints, I believe. And then I think he's going to add another viewpoint in the final book. Uh, some viewpoints are from characters that we've known for a long time and some from are, are from new characters or new-ish characters. Red Rising is just the beginning and it is incredible and it is beautiful in its own right. You can read it and you can try to stop there, but you're not going to be able to because the series only continues. Pierce Brown only gets better as an author and as a storyteller. You start Red Rising, you're going to be in this for the long run. Red Rising is a great book. One of my favorite books of all time, probably top five. And I think most would agree that it is an exceptional book. Uh, have you read it? If so, let me know what your thoughts are of the book down in the comments below. If you've read the series, which is your favorite in the series so far? And who's your favorite character? If you have yet to read the book, then what are you waiting for? The link to purchase the book is down in the comment section below. The audiobook is good as well. You need to start this yesterday. Thank you for watching this video and for hitting the like button. If you haven't yet, click subscribe so that you can join the Dragon Army. And if you care, share this video with someone that you think might like Red Rising. And I'll see you in the next video.